What is the Entity Framework? Hey everyone, Garth Schulte here. In this micro nugget, we're going to talk about what's known as the ADO.NET Entity Framework and how we can use it to save time when developing our applications that utilize a database. To really get a good grasp of what the Entity Framework is all about, it's good to know where we came from. So prior to the Entity Framework and another technology here known as Link to SQL, something I'll talk about, which is very similar to the Entity Framework. Prior to these technologies, when we designed an application and built an application, we would use a tiered or layered approach. And we still do, but you'll see how the Entity Framework uh, abstracts a lot of this from us, a lot of the, the heavy lifting. So we would have a presentation tier, which would be our user interface. We would have a middle tier, otherwise known as the business layer, which would contain all of the classes, our class hierarchy that model our business processes and our business objects. And then we would have a data tier, the data layer here, which would be responsible for managing the state of our objects, putting data, pulling data out of those objects, pushing them into the database, and then pulling data out of the database and pushing them into our objects. So there's a lot of work in this area here, a ton of work interfacing your objects with the data layer, and then even just writing the data layer to interface with your data source. Enter the ADO.NET Entity Framework. It's known as an ORM, an Object Relational Mapper, which really just means when we want to work with the data source and use the Entity Framework, we're going to say, hey, Entity Framework, we want to work with these tables, these views, these store procedures. The Entity Framework will say, okay, and it'll spin up a bunch of objects that are automatically mapped to those backend entities. And the beauty of all this is it's built on top of ADO.NET, which means we no longer have to worry about ADO.NET. We don't have to worry about data sets, data tables, uh, data adapters, connections. ADO.NET becomes a low-level uh, data access library that's controlled through the Entity Framework. So we only work with the Entity Framework and our classes and our objects whenever we want to send something over to the database, send this, save the changes to the database, or send something new over to the database, or get something from the database. We tell the Entity Framework to do it. It manipulates ADO.NET to go do the work. So with the Entity Framework, our data layer truly is abstracted. Our business layer can be abstracted, but the nice thing about the Entity Framework is we, we can customize our business layer if we want to. Now, Link to SQL is also an ORM, but it's a very lightweight version of, of the Entity Framework, really. It only supports one-to-one -one mapping between your classes and their underlying database counterparts. So generally, you'll use Link to SQL for those quick jobs that doesn't require a complex business layer, and you'll use the Entity Framework when you do need a complex business layer because, again, you can fully customize it. You have a lot of control over your class hierarchy. So this gives us a lot more time to spend in Visual Studio building our presentation layer, interfacing with our business and data layer in one shot. So we can cut out a lot of this stuff by using the Entity Framework. And it's just a, it's a great technology, and it keeps getting better with each iteration. So let me give you a quick demonstration on how easy it is to get the Entity Framework up and running. So I have uh, Visual Studio launched here. I have a solution, micronuggets that Entity Framework. I have two projects in here. One's a class library project, so our DLL output. And one is our user interface, uh, which is a, a C-sharp WinForms project with a form in it. So inside of our, and the nice thing about doing it this way is now we could wrap our entire data model, our Entity data model, into its own DLL that we can then use across many projects within our enterprise. So this is actually our business and data layer in one. In fact, let me rename this to reflect that. Biz data, we'll call it. There we go. And inside of here, I have an entity data model ready to go that's pointing to an AdventureWorks 2012 database here uh, on a uh, SQL Server 2012 Express instance. So when I created this entity data model, I walked through the wizard. And let me open this up. And I said, hey, entity data model. I want the person table out of the AdventureWorks database turned into a person class that contained properties mapped to all the fields in that table. And that's what it did. Pretty straightforward. Now, the next thing I did then was add in a WinForm project. And I added uh, just a, a data grid view here to the form. And then I literally wrote two lines of code. If we go into the code, you can see we have one line of code here. Oh, my mouse went funky on me. There we go. One line of code that points to the entity data model itself. So this initializes the entity data model with the connection string stored inside of the app.config and gives us an object to work with at that level. Then I just use the data source property, the data grid view, and tied it to the people collection, which is a collection of person objects filled up with data, one person that represents each row in the database. So let's run this. What do we get? We get a data grid view filled up with all of those people. Not bad for two lines of code 
and a, and a quick wizard to walk through and map the uh, the table into a class, right? Let me show you how easy it is to get in any data model up and running from scratch. So let's close out of our existing code windows here. I'm just going to right click on our class library, head down to add, choose new item. Make sure you have data chosen on the left hand pane and then I'll give us access to the ADO.NET Entity Data Model. I'll just leave the default here, uh, name model1.edmx. We hit add, that'll take us into the wizard. So we can uh, start from scratch. If you want to do an empty model, you can uh, build it uh, manually, or we're going to generate from a database since the database already exists. We'll hit next. We'll point to the database, AdventureWorks 2012 on our SQL 2012 Express instance. We'll say that we want to save the connection string here inside of our app.config and we'll choose next. And the last step of the wizard is what objects in that database do you want to turn into classes that we can work with in our application. So let's just drop down tables and let's just head down here and uh, choose something simple here. Like how about product? That looks like a good one. We'll hit finish and that's going to generate our model one.edmx, create the class, map all the fields uh, in our class here to the fields inside of the database and we're good to go. Now you'd be able to come down into your uh, front end and start working with it in code. Now keep in mind, if you are going to do the, the kind of thing I did here where you're going to have a class library project separated and, and, and your entity data models aren't going to be inside of your the project that you're, you're referencing them from, then just make sure you set references to your class library, of course, but also system.data.entity. And, and if you try to do this without referencing it, it'll tell you to reference it, so not a big deal. Also make sure you drag your app.config file down into that project as well because it's going to use the connection strings stored in this project to pass them in to your data models. In the CBT micro nugget, we talked about what the entity framework is all about and saw how we can use it to take a lot of the time and hassle off building our data layer and managing the interaction between our business layer and our data source. I hope this has been informative for you and I thank you for viewing.